From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Friday, July 17th. I'm Wayne Pratt. Alani Benson went from protesting in Ferguson to becoming a St. Louis County police officer. He says law enforcement needs more black officers. You cannot expect people that don't understand your culture, that don't understand you, that have never lived with you, that have never had a 15-minute conversation with you about life, to understand you. St. Louis Public Radio's Marissa Ann Lewis-Thompson speaks with Benson about his decision to become an officer in the midst of calls for police accountability. That's in just a few minutes. Student athletes in St. Louis County will have more restrictions on practices and games starting Monday. County Executive Sam Page is implementing the rules because of what he says is a worrying trend of coronavirus infections among teens. Sports are more one of the most important ways to learn responsibility, discipline, and teamwork. But because youth sports bring people together, the activities that this brown youth sports are fertile ground for viral transmission. County health information shows an average of 20 cases per day among children ages 10 to 19. Teams will not be able to scrimmage with other squads or work out in groups larger than 10. No spectators will be allowed. Page says getting infections linked to sports in line is key to safely opening schools August 24th. A majority of universities in the St. Louis area will not be testing students for coronavirus in the fall. St. Louis Public Radio's Kayla Drake explains how colleges without medical schools are connecting students to testing sites. Harris Stowe State University, Lindenwood University, and the University of Missouri St. Louis say they do not have the capacity to provide students and faculty with coronavirus tests. Instead, they have partnered with county health departments and plan to send students to free testing centers if they show symptoms of COVID-19. Chris Sullivan is the director of health services at UMSL. He says the school is still estimating how many students will return to campus. We know that it's not enough just to do a one time. Everybody gets tested the first day of classes and have that really mean very much. So it just the resources necessary to do broad scale repeated testing is just kind of beyond our ability. Masks will be required on campus and students, faculty and staff will be responsible for monitoring their temperatures daily. I'm Kayla Drake, St. Louis Public Radio. St. Louis Symphony Orchestra has canceled plans to resume concerts next month. As St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin reports, the move is prompted by rising numbers of coronavirus cases. The orchestra's performances have been on hold since March, when it began postponing concerts because of the coronavirus. The plan had been to resume in August, with some of the events postponed from last spring. But President and CEO Marie-Hélène Bernard says they can't do that safely with coronavirus numbers on the rise. We wanted to be very cautious and, you know, the safety of our audience and musicians are uh, the priority in, in this situation. So this is probably the driving factor leading to the rescheduling of these concerts. Bernard says she'll announce next month whether the orchestra will delay the start of its new season on September 19th. In the meantime, it's developing safety protocols that the city will have to approve before Powell Hall reopens. I'm Jeremy Goodwin, St. Louis Public Radio. A group seeking to end homelessness among veterans is planning to expand to St. Louis. The Veterans Community Project is seeking to buy land in the city's 18th Ward that's in the north central part of St. Louis. The group, which former Missouri Secretary of State Jason Kander joined last year, creates villages of tiny houses to help homeless veterans. Kander is in charge of Veterans Community Project's efforts to expand nationally and says St. Louis is a natural place to accomplish that goal. The Board of Aldermen has to vote to actually sell it to us, which, you know, you never say uh, anything's over, but we're confident about how that's going. Uh, So when they come back from recess, they'll, they'll vote on that. Kander made those comments on our Politically Speaking podcast, which is on the website, stlpublicradio.org. Alani Benson found himself on the front lines in Ferguson calling for change after Michael Brown Jr. was killed by a police officer. But protesting wasn't enough. He became an officer with the St. Louis County Police Department in 2016. Benson spoke with St. Louis Public Radio's Marissa Ann Lewis-Thompson about why he made the choice and being a police officer assigned to protests. I knew from that moment I always wanted to be a police officer you know, way before the Michael Brown killing. 
that was just a motivational step right there, knowing that I could possibly get in and become a police officer. So I always wanted to be the change I wanted to see in the neighborhood, you know. And now that I am the change, and I can say I am the change because people see me now as a police officer. And when I come to a scene you know, or I pull up in front of your house and they're African-American as well, it, it tends to, you know, settle the mood. Has any of the recent tension between police officers and black people make you reconsider being an officer? First, I look at it as this is my job. This is what feeds my family. Um, this is what provides everything right now for my family. Secondly, you know, it's always in the back of my head that these these African Americans are being killed by police officers, and it makes the job very stressful. Uh, I have thought recently, like, wow, this job is overwhelming because um, I'm out here trying to do a job and I'm doing it the right way, and I you know a lot of officers like myself get, you know, for lack of a better words, get punished for some officer that does something thousands of miles away but we have the job to do and I suck it up and I put on a uniform and I go to work every day. Sometimes I know that I'm going to be sitting out in 100 degree weather and somebody's yelling in my face about something that I feel strongly about and I know they feel strongly about but I can't have that communication while I'm on a ride line. How do you hope to teach your son about the realities of being black in America? when his dad's an officer, but you see footage coming out all the time about Black people in general and other people of color being killed by the police. I'm going to teach him more so respect, understand, and push yourself to be that change. You know, I I get that this stuff been going on way before me, way way before you. I get we need to see more African American officers. You cannot expect people that don't understand your culture, that don't understand you, that has never lived with you, that has never had a 15 minute conversation with you about life, to understand you. I get we're all human, but we need more African American officers. Like I said, when I go to scenes, when I go to a house and there's an African-American family and they see me pull up, they talk to me. Do you think that police departments, if there is any hope left in building that aspect of trust when that trust has been broken time and time again, right now you have people calling for defunding the police department or abolishing it completely? A lot of this trust can be built. Like I said, promoting that narrative in the black community to become police officers. We always saying FPT, the police department, but those same people call the police. You call us for help. You know, I have been on plenty of calls and they'd be like, that's the police, you're Uncle Tom, you this, you that. And I, I straight up and tell them, like, you call me here, man. You call me. You know, defunding police is taken away from my son, taken away from my family taken away from my livelihood. You think I'm going to do this job if I'm not getting paid to do this job accordingly? I have a master's. I'm going to be working on my doctorate here soon. And our department is paying me for me having a master's. That money will be gone. You think I'm going to stay being a police officer with a, with a master's degree and a doctorate? I don't have to be here. I'm here because God is pushing me to do this. You know, so it's a lot of officers just like me. You think you have bad officers now, Wait till they start paying us $15 an hour or they stop giving us overtime to work when we're out there on the ride line. I mean, the application process is going to be very slim to none because we want to want to do this job, you know. So defund the police is not the right way to go. That was St. Louis County Police Officer Alani Benson speaking with St. Louis Public Radio's Marissa Ann Lewis-Thompson. Our Maria Altman edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.